Okay, thank you everyone for joining us. I'd like to wish you a happy new year and welcome to the Calgary and neighboring circles um, Christmas bird count results for 2021. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 7 land here in Calgary. And I'd also like to thank the circle compilers for sharing their information with us. Um, I know we've all been busy participating in these counts the past few weeks, so it's great to finally have the numbers and everyone together. So with that, I would like to introduce Don Cassidy, who is the Cal or the, excuse me, the Chestermere Count Circle Compiler. Don, if you'd like to go ahead, you can share your screen now, introduce yourself, and present the results from your circle. Please ensure you're unmuted, Don. There you go. How's that? Yeah, and if you'd like to turn your video on, it's up to you. I'll have your screen. We'll have your face in the corner there so we can see you speaking. Okay, got you, so. Okay, good. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank uh, uh, Matt uh, for emailing me about a week or so ago to invite me to share the information from the uh, Chestermere Circle. So it's much appreciated and uh, certainly look forward to sharing uh, what we've been uh, discovering uh, just east, of course, of the fine city of Calgary. Um, quick uh, history. Uh, essentially, the uh, this is the fourth uh, bird count. Uh, the very first one was uh, four years ago. My wife and I basically ran uh, the very first one and went out and did counting. We were new to the area at that time. Uh, since then, uh, we've gotten more people locally interested. Uh, we also had a few people from Calgary uh, participate in the most recent uh, count, which of course was the 2021. Um, the results are always, uh, of course, different as you would know uh, each year. So what I'd like to do is with you is uh, run through uh, the uh, slides that uh, you see on the screen and uh, Hopefully, uh, they're going to work here for me. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll go right back to the beginning here. In fact, I'll go back one. So, uh, a couple of photos there for you. And uh, then here's our results. So I just took the 2020 and 2021 uh, years, of course. Uh, the Canada geese uh, really seen the love of the farm fields uh, just east of town and also north of town. We had a number of our uh, field counters and also people at home uh, seeing geese fly uh, to the east. We moved our numbers up from 1264 last year to uh, 1575 uh, this year. Uh, most of them were very close, uh, just on the other side of Highway 1 and basically kind of took that large curve as you go uh, across from Sunset Beach. Black-billed magpie, of course, is a fascinating bird. And uh, we had quite a jump in numbers uh, from 68 uh, to 117. And uh, we have a few resident ones here, of course. Last year, we had quite a few rock pigeons. Uh, there was an old barn that's as you turn the corner to swing uh, west into Calgary. You'll see an old barn there. Uh, we came across several hundred there last year. This year, though, the Numbers were down significantly, uh, down to 71. Um, house sparrow is uh, absolutely, seems to be exploding. Uh, this year, uh, year 455 uh, compared to only uh, 137 uh, the year before. So uh, we're seeing a lot more of them, of course, in large flocks, and they are attracting uh, some small uh, predators such as merlins and sharp-shinned hawks. Uh, in the neighborhoods here uh, in town. Uh, snow bunting was new. Uh, we found uh, those snow buntings, our field uh, folks on that one saw those uh, on the Inverlake Road south side just before you hit the slough and uh, we hit uh, 200. So that was a new species uh, for us. Uh, in 2020 as well, uh, we had no common red poles uh, whatsoever. Uh, this time, though, uh, we had a, a massive uh, flock, uh, a couple of them actually, and the total uh, reported was 157. 
And the, the oddity that really surprised me uh, was uh, the Mallards uh, joining uh, the geese out in the same fields. Uh, last year, we didn't see any Mallards any place. And this year, uh, we're up to about 316. So that was uh, a bit of a green head surprise, one might call it. Um, moving on uh, to the next slide. Uh, the gray partridge, uh, we've had some luck out uh, this way with those. We moved from eight to a dozen, and uh, we, uh, Elaine and I saw a flock of seven and another group of five. Uh, the northern flicker, pretty consistent. Uh, those are seen right in town uh, most often, uh, flying up and down the alleyways uh, in the cove area and also towards the south end of Chestermere. Uh, the uh, blue jay, uh, we struck out this year. Uh, last year we had three. Uh, this year no one sighted any. Uh, they had been sighted about a uh, month earlier, but uh, beyond that, uh, none. Uh, the American crow, uh, we went from nine last year right down to a shutout uh, this time. And the common raven uh, was up uh, significantly from uh, five uh, to 23. So uh, that was uh, quite noticeable. Uh, the uh, black cap chickadee, really consistent numbers there, basically five and six. Uh, one of our, uh, our two uh, field counters who were from Calgary, they spotted a nice small flock of uh, Bohemian waxwings, uh, 15. Last year, uh, our counters and field uh, uh, drivers didn't see any. Uh, the next uh, bird, of course, we had the American tree sparrow. Uh, last year, uh, two people on foot identified uh, 18. Uh, this year, uh, zero. And uh, the house finches uh, dropped a bit. Uh, they went from 23 uh, to 12. So about half the, the usual amount. Um, no great horned owls this year. Uh, a husband and wife team from last year who uh, really enjoyed birding, they spotted one. Uh, we had uh, no downy woodpeckers, although we've seen them in the neighborhood. The red-breasted nuthatch, uh, we were down uh, four, uh, down to one this year. The one that was counted in the same location and residence uh, as the other three were counted, uh, the one a uh, couple who watches uh, an area close to the lake uh, had four the previous year. Uh, White-breasted nuthatches were down significantly from six to one. Uh, the dark-eyed juncos, we uh, didn't have any as well as pine siskins, uh, none at all. The good news is, is we, we did finally see a snowy owl. Our two Calgarians who uh, joined us uh, did well. They, they found our first snowy owl for the year. And uh, we had one Merlin, uh, which was great. And uh, Elaine and I driving, uh, oh, not that far away from here, about five kilometers uh, from here, we uh, spotted a northern shrike uh, as part of the, the mix. And actually last week, we did have one right in our backyard uh, entertaining some sparrows. Uh, so overall, uh, we, uh, last year we had 18 species, uh, this year uh, 20. And uh, generally speaking, uh, was a success. Uh, the uh, weather conditions were very much identical to Calgary temperature wise. Uh, skies were overcast. We had a bit of a breeze out here. Uh, there wasn't too much uh, snow. Uh, the only other uh, bird that I uh, don't think I included on my list here, oddly enough, is the ringneck pheasant. I can't believe I forgot that. Uh, this year, uh, we actually had 12 uh, ringneck pheasants uh, pop up for us, and there was a flock of 10 uh, on the east side of Highway 9 heading on the Inverlake Road East, and uh, we, Lane and I, picked up another pair of them uh, fairly close uh, to uh, Highway 9 as well on the same day. So that one there isn't in the chart. I don't know how I missed that. It's probably just my old age, but uh, the ring neck pheasant uh, was a real pleasant surprise. I think if I remember correctly, the group of 10 uh, were all females uh, based on the uh, one photograph that we had. So uh, that is basically it for the uh, Chestermere circle. If there are any questions, uh, please let me know and I'd be trying my best to answer them for you. Thank you.
Hey, Don, I have a question for you. Yeah, thank what you, was your participant uh, count this year? We had uh, originally 13 involved. Uh, we had lost three to COVID literally the day before uh, the count. Uh, one was uh, a gentleman who was an international traveler. He got back, he tested positive. Uh, he and his wife are counters. So they were both essentially uh, 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 non-participants. And then uh, ironically, we had one who is a nurse who was called into work on the Sunday. So we would have had 13 uh, people. So we did it with 10. And what we did is we had one extra uh, part of the uh, the circle to drive. So Elaine and I split that up with one of the other couples to cover it. Eh? So uh, we have grown from two to 13 and uh, it gives the, uh, the teams we found driving uh, enough range roads and township roads say to take a look and it's kind of weird because uh, you see a lot of magpies out there of course and with all the private property and that out there you got to really look for those tree lines and interesting grass lines uh, to spot things eh? and the advantage though is the fact that you can really slow down in some of those roads and really take a good look eh, as you go along so overall that was our, our count of uh, active individuals and uh, the year before we had uh, 10 and we basically retained uh, everyone and added three uh, this year to our participants, which is uh, a positive sign as well. Thanks, Matt. Great, thanks very much, Don. So now I'd like to invite Gavin McKinnon to share the Pritis results. So I'll stop uh, Don's screen there. And Gavin, if you're available, please load up your presentation and take it off. All right. There we go. Can everyone see the screen there? Yes, we can. All right. I it won't let me go into present mode. Um, so I'll just flip through the slides here. Um, so I'll start off with an overview of the circle. So the Pritis circle is uh, kind of nestled in between the, the Calgary count circle and um, the Sheep River count circle. Um, um, a large portion of it is on Tutsina Nation. Um, so that requires us to obtain permits and have teams go in and drive the roads in there. Um, we had a bit of an issue this year is the roads weren't cleared from the east side. So a team had to go in through a different entrance and weren't able to actually get to part of their area. But we managed to split up and have uh, good coverage uh, throughout the circle. Uh, I'll go into the numbers here. Um, in total, we had 30 species uh, with 1,650 individuals. Um, Three new species were added to the count this year uh, that hadn't been seen before, and those were Merlin, Townsend, Solitaire, and House Finch. Um, high counts this year. Uh, we had our highest ever number of common red poles, black capped chickadees, and common ravens, I believe. Um, and a lot of a lot of the numbers, I think the chickadee numbers especially, are due to having more more people walking around rather than driving. The weather was pretty nice um, when we did the count and it has been, we've had, we've had good weather pretty much throughout the whole, every count we've had all four. Uh, so we've been really lucky with the weather, but um, we had a good turnout of participants. Um, we had 21 participants this year. For example, last year we had 12. Um, and the few years before that we had 16 and 21. Um, for the individual birds counted, the first few years were almost exactly the same. And the last two years have been up. And I think that just has to do with better coverage um, throughout the circle. Uh, we covered more ground those years than we did in 2018 and 2019. Um, so I don't think that's really an accurate representation that there are more birds. Uh, I think it's just a just kind of the relation between the effort and um, 
how many individuals were found by each observer. Um, the species number has stayed pretty consistent, um, but anywhere between 27 and 31. So uh, this year we had 30, which is which is pretty average. Um, we had we had a few groups out there. Uh, the average group total was about 12. Um, so there was there was some overlap, but a lot of a lot of groups saw unique species of their own. So um, that was really interesting to see. There really isn't any open water on on the count, so that's uh, a bit of an issue uh, for finding water birds. As you can see here, we only had 20 Canada geese that were that were seen in the north end of the count circle. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for now. Um, so if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to happy to answer them. Can you remind everyone about the date that the count happened? Uh, yes, the uh, the date the count happened was uh, January second. So the the first Sunday of the new year, and I'm going to try and keep that uh, consistent to uh, to future counts as well. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions come in on the chat here, Gavin, but um, maybe you can stick around for a little bit and maybe something will come through there. But right. thank you very much for sharing with us tonight. And I'll just stop your screen and invite Jim to come online and share his screen. How about that? Can you see that? It's live. Okay, yes. Woohoo! Welcome. Okay, this is the um, the New Year's Day Christmas bird count, and well, it should be called the New Year's count. It's always always just Fish Creek Park, and it's um, always on January first, New Year's Day, and a good way to start the um, start the new year. So, by the uh, just a rough idea of what it is. It's not. It's not an official count, of course, like all the others. It's. It's really just a census of what's. Um, what's going on in Fish Creek Park? It's been around since '94, so uh, it's. Um, it's got some good history to it. Um, what else can we say? And it's really in this count. It's a little bit different in that it's only from. Well, I say sunrise, but it's really just. Um, from uh, about 8 30 9 o'clock till noon which eh, causes me a little bit of you know making some decisions afterwards that will come to later participants got a whole pile of them um good good turnout but we we lost about eight people at least two to illness it um um so that areas like shannon terrace and Poplar Island had a lot fewer people than we expected. Um, that's why you'll see in Poplar Island, there's me and my two friends were there, plus Burnsmead lost a couple, two people at, at, with Sheila. And so we had to go help her out or cover part of her area. So, and I don't think we did such a great job as, as we could have if the other people had been there. So we had um, quite a number of people but these are all the, all the ones, the regular leaders, I think just about everybody is, um, is a yeah, regular leader for the, um, for the count, which is much appreciated. Makes my job a lot easier. Uh, so one look at the park, it's really Fish Creek is three or four of the areas that we divide things up for and, um, and the Bow River is the other one, two, three, three and a half areas. So it's really two separate environments, which makes it quite nice. This is another way to look at it, Shannon Terrace area, uh, Bebo Grove, this is actually um, uh, Marshall Springs, Fodiers Flats. We added a new area this year, and that was uh, Glenfield. 
because a guy, uh, one of the birders, Bob Leonhardt, um, had found some good birds there last year, but he wasn't, you know, just officially on part of the count. So this year he did the count and found some nice birds throughout the um, uh, Glenfield area. We always have Hullswood and Banks, Bankside Burnsmead area and Mallard Point. Interestingly, the, uh, the Poplar Island, which is Mallard Point, Poplar Island is the one area. Ever since before 2013, we could always get across the channel. It was very shallow and we could uh, go on to Poplar Island and see, count the birds there. And it was very easy to access birds on the river. Ever since the big flood of 2013, the channel's been too deep, too fast, and, uh, and can't uh, cross it. This year, the whole thing was frozen. Not that anybody wanted to go over it because over the ice, because it's pretty fast and deep underneath, but uh, it's an indication of how cold it was the days before the, um, before the count. Um, highlights for the year? Well, the last year we had some really cool birds like uh, trumpeter swans and lots of barrows, golden eyes. This year, well, the new bird was a grackle and the, uh, the other one was, we got a lot, bunch, whole bunch of robins that uh, were uh, pretty high on that, pretty high numbers for the robins. It was January 1st. I don't know if you're in the count or sleeping in, but it was minus 23 when we started. And it did warm up relatively to minus 10. And it was beautifully sunny and no wind. Got to love that. By the numbers. We've got 83 cumulant, a yeah, whole bunch of species since 94. Um, we had 31 participants this year and 33 species, which is both of those are down a bit. Possibly, let's blame it on the cold weather in long term cold weather. Um, this gives an idea of the, let's see, first off, the weather. It looks like it was the second coldest day uh, for starting temperature since 1994. The other one was 2018. That year it was so cold and so foggy you couldn't see anything on the river because of all the fog. Uh, this year it was just cold. The, and that meant uh, the green line is participants, the light green line. And so down a little bit, maybe not too bad. And then um, the number of species holding about not you know, normal over the last couple of years anyway. This, I throw this out there, too much data to look at, oh my God. But you'll see along the top, there's the um, four areas that are part of, um, that are on the, on the um, uh, Fish Creek side and the four areas that are uh, really along the Bow River, although Hull's Wood is kind of in the middle. And so this shows that most of the waterfowl, of course, are on the Bow River, except for 200 and some mallards out in, um, out in the Glenfield area. And then further down in the turquoise, you'll see all the birds that are, um, are throughout the whole park, the woodpeckers, and magpie raven and black cap chickadees through the whole whole park, and down near the bottom, the ones in red are just primarily just in the um, in the um, uh, Fish Creek Park or Fish Creek area. Except for usually we get white-breasted nuthatches out into the other areas, Poplar Island at least, and more of them, but not so much this year. So I've broken it down into this based uh, based on the wonderful um, uh, uh, spreadsheet that uh, Laura Fitzpatrick has done for me. She uh, so we've got the birds that are about average for this year. So we look at these ones: mountain chickadee, boreal chickadee, black-capped. They're all about, and I primarily just look at the ten-year average. The lifetime average back to 94, well, the park has changed an awful lot. It used to be out in the middle of nowhere with just some houses on the, um, on the north side, a few neighborhoods there, but now it's completely surrounded like, uh, 
almost like Nose, Nose Hill, you know, completely surrounded by um, suburbs. So it's really just the 10 year average that I care about mostly. And these birds that you see on the left, they're all about average for this year's count. This year, um, the, uh, the ones that were above average, hmm, American Robin. Why in the cold weather there's so many are out there? Um, hard to say, but um, it was a new record for them. And, and all of these were above their 10-year uh, record, meaning we found some, ten, some solitaires, some pileated woodpeckers, and, uh, and lots of hairy woodpeckers. The ones that were down compared to the last 10 years, um, unfortunately, there's yeah, quite a few of them, maybe because the river was so cold and a little bit more frozen over. Uh, maybe it was because the participants were down a bit. But the mallards, yeah, maybe they were all out in uh, Chestermere, uh, eating in the fields, but they weren't on the river. There was hardly any of them. So they were, they were down a lot. And, and that down at the bottom, we have the one grackle, which is the one new species reported. These are a couple of um, couple of graphs of the um, the favorite birds that I always like to uh, keep an eye on. Um, buffle heads uh, were yeah, down quite a bit. Uh, actually, all the waterfowl on the river were down a fair bit. That um, compared to their ooh, since the beginning of when the count started, and even over the last couple of years, um, and that may be because. Mallards and uh, are one of the uh, favorite food of 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 owl or sorry eagles, but even the eagle numbers were down a bit. Maybe there were maybe they maybe there weren't as many eagles because there weren't as many uh, mallards. But uh, yeah, not quite as many of those this year. A few of my other favorites, the um, white-breasted. Even with no, yeah, they're down a bit from last year, but just trending about normally and red-breasted nuthatches, um, not, um, yeah, actually down a bit as well, but still not excessively. I like to keep track of the chickadees, uh, black-capped, about normal, mountain chickadees, which whew, we'd never seen before 2015. And I noticed on Gavin's that he had like, um, hundred, uh, I don't know, dozens, lots, of uh, mountain chickadees, which I think is just cute as can be. And, and we got two of them this year. So there's a few that come into Fish Creek Park. And boreal chickadees have just slowly declined over the year, the years, but uh, there were still, I think, six of them. So it gives an idea of what, um, what's happening with chickadees. The one surprise for this year, which was a bit of an anomaly, was this guy. And um, so I give him an honorable mention because the count, the rules are that, you know, the rules that I don't, I don't know where I got these rules from. Some, whoever I took over the uh, count from decade ago or more said it's, the count just goes from sunrise till noon. And uh, it's only, you know, birds that are seen by the participants. And um, so this guy was, for the first time ever seen, uh, was in the park on, on January 1st. And somebody at, uh, at uh, some people, a birder at Marshall Springs told Jim, Jim St. Laurent, his group, about it. They couldn't, it, it had moved, moved a bit since then. But later on, Blake Weiss, had, uh, who was running the Poplar Island group, he went down that way got this beautiful picture of it but um and and I may have to adjust things on the uh, on the count it is a census of the park should we just keep it to the three hours or you know count the um, um count even birds that are seen by people in the afternoon that's a um, discussion for another day with some need some other thoughts on that but for now there is a um, there was a, a great gray owl in the park on January 1st. I think a, lot, a few other people got to see it as well.
And next year, the count will be on uh, same way, January 1st, mark your calendar. I um, look forward to uh, next year. Maybe it'll be a little warmer, can't be much colder. Are there any questions? Hey, Jim, I can read them out for you if you like. Oh, sure. Okay, so given the number of gray jays on the Pritis count just west of Fish Creek, has there ever been any on the Fish Creek count? Oh, you know what? I can't answer that off the top of my head, but you know what? I can... Can I share this? Let's see. Let me, that's a darn good question. And this is what I wanna do. So this is a spreadsheet of everything that's ever been seen on here since the beginning of time. Are you seeing the spreadsheet? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, and this is, uh, let's go the yearly tab. This has everything that's ever been seen. Uh, gray J should be right around Blue J. Canada J. Not since 2004. There was a couple back then, but uh, not since then. Love that question. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, a lot of data. It's nice to have somebody ask about it. Anything else? Well, I don't see anything coming through, but once again, if you'd like to stay on uh, for the other presentations and keep your eye on the chat, maybe somebody will send you a message following up there with you. Sure. Great. Thank you very much, Jim. Okay. I would like to invite Kirsten to part or, uh, load up her screen for the Cochrane count. Thank you, everyone, and Chris Johansson. Uh, I am the count compiler for uh, Cochrane. I've been the compiler since 2019, and my husband Josh joins in the effort sometimes as well. Um, so Cochrane is in its 22nd year. We started in 1996 and have run since, with the exception of 2009 and 2016 to 2018. So our count date was December 18th. Um, our party hours were up from our average of 61, and we had 31 participants up from our average, so we're sort of missing quite a few of the historical participant numbers, but up from our average for the numbers that we do have. Our uh, number of species was equal to 2020 at 39 individuals, um, and uh, bird observations much lower than 2020's number of 5,100, which was a record high in 2020, but on higher on average, um, higher than our, sorry, higher than our average of 2,764. So we have seven count areas, which we uh, subdivided last year uh, due to COVID restrictions and kind of participant comfort levels. Um, uh, yeah, so those were sort of subdivided as needed so that we could kind of keep to cohorts and whatnot. Um, we lost some volunteers uh, this year due to conflicts with other count dates. Um, and overall, like fairly mild day, but we did have, uh, yeah, we did have a Chinook, so we um, had quite strong winds, which suppressed a lot of activity. So here are our count areas. Um, they're very large uh, because we have, um, we don't have a lot of access um, in the, uh, Indigenous lands uh, on the west hand side here. This is the Stony Dakota land, and then we have a lot of private land um, and whatnot within the count circle. Something we're working on for future years, but those are our seven count areas, and they are the same as they were or have been since 2019. Um, so just, just a little explanation of the legend here. So um, this relative column with the colors is relative to our historical average since 1996. Bold indicates a new highest count record and the asterisks indicate species that were recorded on five or less counts since 96. So 
Uh, we reserve we observed record high woodpecker counts for downies and hairies and almost for northern flickers. We were only off by two individuals from setting a record. Um, it's a good year for the woodpeckers. Uh, we were also close to a record high number of rough-legged hawks. Again, only off by two individuals. Our average for roughies is five. Um, we were pleasantly low on rock pigeons. Uh, the average count is 269 with a max of 10 of 510 and this year we only recorded 68. Uh, we got a pileated woodpecker which has only been recorded on three other counts and uh, we got a lovely photo of the individual from Scott Slocum and that's at the end of the presentation. We set a count record for Northern Shrike at four, our average is one. Blue Jays were double the average of 15, crows were quadruple our average of three, and ravens were up from our average of 246. We had a record high black capped chickadee count at 599, our average is 241. Um, Jim will be happy that our mountain chickadees were there, uh, so we had we had eight, which is which is good. Um, boil chickadees were a really bizarre miss for us. Um, we recorded them on 20 out of the 22 counts, um, and our average is normally 12, and we got absolutely none this year. Uh, Red-breasted nuthatches were half the average, whilst uh, white-breasted were double the average, and we almost set a record high for white-breasted. Um, golden crown kinglet was another odd miss. Our average is six, uh, typically, and we've recorded them previously on sort of 15 out of 22 counts, so three quarters. Um, we set another record high for robins at five, and an unusual bird having only been recorded on two other counts. Again, pleasantly low on invasive species. We recorded absolutely no European starlings for the first time in the count's history, um, so that's nice. <laughs> Um, we recorded 3.6 times the average number of bohemian wax wings, um, but then shockingly recorded no snow buntings at all. We normally have an average of 244 and we've recorded them on 20 out of 22 counts. So that was a weird miss as well. Um, dark eyed juncos were double the average of five um, and pine gross beaks saw double their average of 21, uh, which was sort of a trend that was echoed uh, throughout the finches this year. So continuing the finchy success, house, finch, house finches were close to a record high. Um, our average is 16. Red crossbills were also close to a record high. White wing crossbills were almost triple the average. Common red poles were double the average. Um, and lastly, our one thriving introduced species was the house sparrow, up from the average of 576. A garden probably contributed to a good percentage of that number after they figured out how to squeeze into all of our swallow boxes. So apologies for that. Um, overall, our total was high at 3,959 from our average of 2,764. So some improvements for the future, sort of more marketing um, to get more individuals involved, putting out things in the local paper and whatnot. Cochranites love their paper. Um, and more sort of proactive and collaborative scheduling with other nearby counts to reduce date conflicts um, and, and sort of proximity to other counts too, so people don't kind of get voted out, I guess. And then uh, looking at some future land access into some good riparian habitat and forested habitat. And then just lastly, thanks to all of our count leaders, um, Jim St. Laurent, Frank Hennessy, Richard Lynn Moore, Kent Russell, Scott Swickham, Sid Andrews, and me, and then our lovely count volunteers. Uh, and then if anyone's interested, that is our count website, which you can go to to look at our data and all sorts of other cool stuff. And thanks, Scott, for the lovely photo. And that's it. Thanks. OK, thanks very much, Kirsten. Okay, so we're looking for our final presenter here. Well, I guess maybe a couple. So do we have Mr. Collister on the line here? Folks, hi everyone. Yeah, I'm gonna talk as I have for the last number of years, talk about uh, what I call the three long-term foothills bird counts and i call them that because they're all 30 
30 plus years, but it's nice to see other comps in the area are getting up there in terms of their their longevity. We, you know, uh, it's been mentioned already that long-term data sets are valuable and I certainly agree with that. So the three counts I'm gonna talk about are, are, are one called the Snake Ted, which is up in the Sundry area, uh, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve, which is in the Water Valley area, and Sheep River, which is the Turner Valley, Millerville area. And um, let me just go to the next slide and give you some geographic idea on them. Many of you know this, but some probably don't. So the snake's head is the farthest north circle on this, on this figure. Cochrane Wildlife Reserve is the next circle down. And Sheep River is this circle to the southwest of Calgary. All of the current circles that are being counted are not on this figure. It was made uh, some years ago. And I believe these were the circles that were extant at that time. So uh, the one thing to get from this figure is to keep in mind that that Snake's Head or Sundry is the farthest north. Cocker and Wildlife Reserve is, is in the middle and Sheep River is to the south. That has implications for the kind of birds and the habitat. Uh, this is the Audubon map of the Snake's Head or Sundry count circle. A whole bunch of detail on there, it doesn't really matter. The important, the important thing to get out of this figure is that the Red Deer River, um, uh, essentially bisects or almost bisects the circle and it's a very important feature in the uh, in the count circle and the habitat uh, in this circle is is primarily dry mixed wood so this is kind of the southern edge of the boreal boreal forest boreal mixed wood but there is some lower foothills on the west side out here where it looks more forested so uh, so this year we ended up with 32 species. Um, it was a very cold day out there. It wasn't our lowest count, but it was uh, on the low side for sure. Uh, this is the circle, this is the Audubon map of the circle for the Cochrane Wildlife Reserve. And um, it doesn't have any, any major drainages in it, uh, other than maybe the Little Red Deer River, which is in the Northwest part. Um, it's primarily lower foothills, but there is some foothills parkland on the east side of the circle and some upper foothills uh, on, on the west edge. And uh, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve this year counted 38 species, which was a good count to average, average the good count for Cochrane Wildlife Reserve. This is the circle for Sheep River, again from Audubon. Um, uh, this circle is primarily lower foothills uh, habitat with some foothills parkland on the east side and a little bit of subalpine essentially inaccessible on the west side. And uh, Sheep River uh, this year tied, tied the lowest count ever back in 1991, I think, or 92, of 30 species. Now, before I get to the actual count results, I always like to show the participants that helped us out on these counts. And uh, many of you are familiar with this scheme where I highlight the folks who did all three counts or did at least two counts. Uh, this year, the uh, the star of the show was, was uh, was Jim St. Laurent who did all three counts. He was the only one. Uh, and there were several of us that, uh, that did two. And then uh, a whole bunch of other folks who could only do one count. If anybody notices that their name isn't on this, let me know, uh, get a hold of me some, some other way and let me know so that I can add it before I distribute this. So to, to get to the results, and uh, I'll just remind folks that, uh, that the counts, as I present this, this data, I present it from north to south. So from the Sundry area through Water Valley to Sheep River. And of course, everybody who knows our area around here knows that as you go farther south, you get closer to the mountains. And that uh, influences the kind of birds and the numbers. Um, uh, that we find. I've already mentioned the number of species. 
um, that we had. You can see that from the participant point of view, um, uh, Snake's Head uh, had a very low number of participants this year. It wasn't a very nice day out there, although it wasn't windy. It was cold, cold all day, but it wasn't windy. But um, um, uh, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve had a cold day, um, bitterly cold, really. And um, uh, but the count still went that day. Sheep River was initially scheduled for the 27th, but uh, it changed it to the 2nd of January to try and take advantage of the forecast good weather. And we did get good temperatures on the 2nd, but it was pretty windy, particularly in the morning. And that had some effect, I believe, on the results. Um, you know, I just want to make a pitch at this point that, that uh, you know, I certainly understand that that the snake's head count is a pretty, uh, um, you know, it was a long drive from Calgary and makes for a long day, but, uh, but I'd, I'd just make this pitch to folks to, to try and find a way or, or, or consider participating in that count um, in future years. The long-term data sets that we're developing with these Christmas bird counts are invaluable and every additional year is, is really important. So. You know, we, uh, we're seeing we're seeing a decline in the number of participants over the peak years, particularly uh, in the Snake's Head and Cochrane Wildlife Reserve counts. So, um, you know, if you can find a way and and uh, and have the inclination, we'd love to have you participate next year and in subsequent years. I know there's a lot of counts out there, and 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 some of them are are on, are on the same day, so. Um, I appreciate that we have to deal with that. Okay, to get into the birds on these on these three counts. Um, on this page, um, the only thing I really wanted to mention other than, than just give you a, a few seconds to look at it and, and, uh, and see the number of tiny species you're particularly interested in, but there were no rough-legged hawks at the snake's head count, which which is pretty interesting considering that in 1987, the count at Snake's Head was 70. And in 1997, um, the count was 54. So quite a, quite a volatile species, at least in the Snake's Head area. Owls in all three of these counts were hard to come by this year, and, and owls are, are a group that has attracted people in the past to come out on these counts, to, uh, hopefully to see owls. Uh, but, uh, but this year was a tough year, although uh, there was a short-eared owl and a northern hawk owl at Snake's Head. Uh, so those were nice surprises. Our great horned owls um, continued to be low on all three of these counts. And uh, I'm aware that pheasant hunters are sensitive about this species and also northern goshawks for, for significant predation, they believe, and it's no doubt true on, on ringneck pheasants. But I sure hope that, that that hasn't translated into a legal persecution. Canada, Canada J numbers were very low on the three counts. Um, very cold weather always seems to reduce the infection of this species. So I suppose, at least for, for Snake's Head and Cochrane Wildlife Reserve, we could attribute some of the low numbers on that. Um, uh, the other thing to notice on this portion of the species list is mountain chickadee numbers across the three counts uh, illustrate the difference in the habitat uh, and natural subregions that comprise each count. So you can see that at Sundry up in Sundry, the snake's head, we're, we're happy to get a mountain chickadee on the count. Uh, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve gets reasonable numbers and the highest counts are in Sheep River closer to the mountains. Uh, Finch numbers on these counts were low, um, I would I would say, although common red poles and snow buntings were around in 
reasonable numbers, I guess, but not, not in the kind of numbers we've seen in some years. Uh, the gray crown rosy finches that we found at Snake's Head was a nice find. So I'll get into a, so that's the species data. So I've just got a few, a very few uh, graphs that I think illustrate a few things. I'll skip, I'll skip through this. I've already made a comment about great horned owls and the fact that their numbers have gone down. This is the, this is the number per party hour of great horned owls at Snake's Edge. You can see how that's gone down over, over time on the count. This is the Sheep River count. You can see how the numbers have gone down. In this case, it's the number of birds. Um, if I present a graph that shows the number of birds rather than the number of birds per party hour, it's because the number of birds graph um, basically evidences the same thing that the, that the number per party hour does. If there's a difference in what the two presentations show, then I'll show the, the number per party hour. Now, pygmy owls, which were, which were hard to find, Fine this year, you can see a snake's head. Um, uh, we struck out there the last three years. So we haven't found any pygmy owls the last three years up in the Sundry area. Um, at the Wildlife Reserve, um, there were no pygmy owls and that was the first time uh, that a pygmy owl hasn't been found since 1998. And in Sheep River, for the first time ever, we didn't find any pygmy owls. There were pygmy owl and count, and count week, but we didn't find any on count day. The golden crown kinglets is one, uh, um, uh, it's just, I really just noticed something about it this year. I'm interested in what people think, but if you look at, at this curve, it, there's something going on, you know, Something's happened since about 2008 with the number of kinglets. And, and I'll, uh, so this is the Sheep River count. So you can see that on this curve. And if we look at the Cochrane Wildlife Reserve count, it's not so pronounced, but again, the numbers of kinglets is, is lower than it had been since around 2008. And sorry, if we look at Snake's Head, um, I think it's also there again. Again, not, maybe not quite as clear as at Sheep River, but not. So I don't know what that means and why and why we're seeing lower numbers or finding lower numbers of golden crown kinglet, but perhaps it's a species we need to keep an eye on. Uh, this is the this is northern hawk owls. I know people are really interested in owls, so 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 when we get an owl on one of the counts, particularly a rarer owl. I like to show uh, the historical uh, results for that species. So this is northern hawk owl. So you can see that that the one we found this year was the first one since about 2017. A couple of years there, we had we had good counts of hawk owls. And the shorted owl, you can see it's the first shorted owl we've had since 2006. And historically, we did have some some nice counts of shorter owls on that on the snakes at CBC. Great crowned rosy finch. We got six uh, at at snakes head, as I highlighted in the uh, numbers results. And uh, interestingly enough, the only other record we have for that count for the snakes head count is back in 1998, and again it was six. Mountain chickadees. Some of the other compilers mentioned things about mountain chickadees, and so I thought, um, uh, not knowing that, but uh, but having noticed what's happening in these three counts with mountain chickadees, I thought it was worthwhile to show these curves. I think I've shown them in previous years, but you can see that that uh, so here we are at Cochrane Wildlife Reserve. So since about 1998, the numbers of mountain chickadees that we found has gone up uh, significantly. Um, I can I can remember way back when when we were you know excited to think that we might get a mountain chickadee on this count, uh, but now it's um, you know, the numbers are reasonably high. So there's so there's Cochrane Wildlife Reserve. Here's Sheep River. So if we go back, that was about 1998 or so. 
Uh, and again, somewhere, somewhere in here, the mountain chickadees started to take off at Sheep River. So I, I, I don't, um, it's kind of interesting to think about them in the sense that um, um, that, that we would expect, I think, or let me put it a different way. Um, I would suggest maybe that there must be factors other than climate change. Of course, you know, we're always thinking climate change when we see changes in, you know, in range and species numbers and so on. And I think something other than climate change must be at work here. Because I think if we, if we thought in climate change terms, we would think that mountain chickadee range would, would contract, not expand. And, and it seems to be expanding in these counts. And, and, and as I mentioned, some of the other compilers uh, mentioned that mountain chickadee numbers were up a bit. So not sure what's going on there. Certainly there's feeding going on and contributing, but anyway, it's another thing to think about and, and, we, and we'll have to keep an eye on what's going on here. You know, as, as everybody who's seen my presentations over the last number of years knows, I like to, I like to uh, pull out of the um, Audubon compilations, um, uh, the counts, the counts uh, from 2020, that's important to keep in mind. These of course aren't these year's uh, counts, aren't, aren't this year's counts because the counts haven't been compiled yet. So this is last year, 2020, and I like to pull out the Alberta counts that are either Canadian or North American highs, not all time highs, but just for last year for 2020. So the so the the entries here that are highlighted in yellow are ones that are North American highs, and the others are are Canadian highs. The non highlighted ones are Canadian highs. Um, you know, a couple of notes. You know, a couple of notes. Um, Interesting that uh, Swainson's thrush was one in Calgary last year was the North American high. Uh, you know, of course, it's a neotropical migrant. They, they go to uh, South America to winter, so we wouldn't expect to see many in Canada or the US. Um, but interesting that one, one makes the USA high. I think, there was a, I think there was one seen at another site in the US. So, we, uh, so Calgary wasn't alone with that with that high, but it was tied for it. And again, uh, Brown Thrasher um, illustrates how it doesn't take very many of those to be, uh, to be a, a, a Canadian high. Uh, that bird doesn't go so far south, so there were some good counts in the US um, that, that, of course, left, left us behind. Um, and I'll just leave my comments of that chart to that. Um, hopefully folks have seen what they need to see there. And I'd like to talk about the four species that that our, our, our foothills counts are, are sort of infamous for. And one of them is the American three-toed woodpecker. And I like to update everybody every year on this. So, um, so in the last 35 years, uh, these three counts have had the highest North American count uh, 19 times, 54% of those counts. Um, six of them were at Cochrane Wildlife Reserve, five at Snake's Head and Sheep River eight. So distributed fairly evenly across the three counts. Sheep River had a count of 11 this year. Uh, I think those were all from Brown Lowry. Um, and that has a good chance of being the North America high. And that would be the ninth time that Sheep River would claim that title if it does. Canada J, um, for 37 years from, nine, from 1984 until now, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve and Sheep River have had the highest North American counts for Canada J, 21 times or 59% of those 37 years. And primarily that's in the Cochrane Wildlife Reserve, but Chief Rivers um, uh, claimed that title seven times. Uh, counts were very low this year, as I highlighted when we went through the species data. So I don't think any of those, any of our foothills counts will be the high count 
for 2021. Um, you know, looking back over then the counts that that were the highest, it looks like you need um, in excess of 70 to have a chance to uh, to be the highest. Now, Greek Ray Owl, um, in the last 42 years, um, Cochran Wildlife Reserve and the Snake Said, for some reason, Sheep River doesn't compete for this. The Cochran Wildlife Reserve and the Snake Said have had the highest North American count 22 times, or about half the time. Um, uh, primarily, again, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve with 16 and Snake Said with seven. Um, uh, sorry, that last statement is is wrong. That's from last year. Uh, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve had one great grail this year, so it's un it's unlikely that any of our counts this year will will claim that title. Cochrane Wildlife Reserve had 15 last year, so. I, I don't imagine any other count came anywhere near that. And then the last species I like to highlight, I can't see the, can, um, it's boreal chickadee. Anyway, I, I, I can't see the title. I hope you folks can. Anyway, this is boreal chickadee. So in the last 38 years, um, uh, these three foothills counts have had the highest North American count about a third of the time. Uh, Cochrane Wildlife Reserve six years, Snakes Head six, Sheep River one. Um, we haven't had it for quite a few years because there's been a couple of Alaskan counts that have gotten into the picture and they apparently have really nice populations of boreal chickadee, uh, that being Fairbanks and, and Anchorage. However, in 2018, uh, a count at Two Harbors, Minnesota, snatched it away from them for, for just the one, one year with a, a count of 535. Okay, I think I'll end, I'll end my presentation there. If there's any questions, I'm happy to, uh, to take them. Otherwise, we'll, I, you know, I suspect we'll go on to Calgary. Hi, Doug. Uh, just a quick question for you. I've seen party hour talked about quite a bit. I'm not familiar with that term. What, what does that mean? Party hours, um, well, if, if you've participated in, in, in a count, the compiler would have asked you to keep track of the hours that, uh, that you spent counting. Um, uh, so as a, as a way, as a very rough way to standardize um, uh, the numbers from year to year. Um, it's been accepted that the best uh, the best way to normalize the counts between years is to divide them by the party hours. So, so if there are a lot of participants one year and there's lots of party hours, um, then you might expect the, the numbers of a particular species to be higher. And in another year, if there were low, if there was lower participation, you might expect the numbers to be lower. And uh, so, if we divide those numbers by the by the number of hours of effort, party hours being the amount of effort, then then we can compare the numbers a little more readily than we can just using the the absolute numbers. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Good. Else? Okay, uh, Doug, there was another question for you. Okay. Uh, maybe not a question, but a hypothesis. Is it possible okay. that the spike in mountain chickadees in 2018 could have, could have to do with the fires over the border in BC that summer? So I think that's suggesting perhaps the population count, but maybe the range expansion that you've identified there. Yeah, let me go back to that. So then, so in 2018, yeah, yeah, this number here, 18, 19, 20, 21. You know, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, perhaps, perhaps, uh, um, you know, there's been a lot of fires in BC over the last number of years. So, so, so I don't, um, 
I don't know. Again, I would think that mountain chickadees are adapted to higher elevations and the habitats that are associated with, with those higher elevations. So wouldn't have expected them to, to be expanding their range to lower elevations and, and the associated habitats with that lower elevation. So I don't know, perhaps. You know, I'm sorry, Might I can't be. provide any answer. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. As I said, thank you to Nature Calgary for allowing us to present, especially Ann Belton and the rest of the board for organizing this event each year. Uh, before I begin, I'd also like to say thank you to a few people that really helped me out this year. Uh, of course, Phil Cram for kind of passing the torch off to me. Uh, some of you may know that I kind of shadowed him last year to understand how he reaches out to people, um, collects the data, does the adjustments, uh, makes all those fantastic media appearances, those types of things. I also want to thank, uh, put a huge thank you out to Lara Fitzpatrick for assisting with the data compilation and building a fantastic spreadsheet that um, allows me to sort the information and better understand some of the trends that we, we can identify historically. Also, thank you to Bob Lefebvre for helping to spearhead the feeder watchers. It's a huge job. The, um, all the captains for the feeder watchers did an excellent job this year in submitting their information. All of the section captains for the Calgary Circle particularly John McFall, who really took off or took the north section off my hand. I thought I could do it on my own and was pretty quickly proven wrong. So thank you to John for that. And I also want to thank Jesse McGinnis and Chad Many Wounds at Sutina for setting us up with the permits to survey W10. So that's the past two years I've been fortunate enough to do that and was happy to welcome in some some new teammates this year. And the final thank you to all of the participants, feeder watchers, all of the captains, just for making this event so successful this year. Okay, so the Calgary Count Week this year was from December 16th to the 22nd, right before the huge uh, cold blast that hit us. December 19th was our count day, and we had some great temperatures that day, I, I would say. It was a low of minus 13 and a high of minus 10. Hardly any wind, um, but a little bit of overcast. So. We were able to spot birds on the water, in the air, and in the trees, and it was an excellent day out in the field. So I pulled a couple uh, images from Google Earth here. The first one, it's as far back as I can go with the satellite imagery that they provide. But I know last year, lots of people were asking, well, you know, Fish Creek's not in the circle, and I live in this new community down south, but I'm not in, so how can I participate? And as we all know, the circle can't really be altered, uh, but of course, the land itself has been dramatically changed. So I want you to notice uh, kind of Nose Hill Park up here, a little bit in the northeast, and particularly in the west, because these changes been dramatic over time. So I'm sorry to all the people that live outside of the circle now, but had you been here in 1984 or sooner, you would have been inside most likely. Uh, we're happy to accept you as a field member, but unfortunately feeder watchers are excluded from that. So with these major land changes, I'll just go back to 1984 again and 2021. The major issues is that urban sprawl is encroaching into the surrounding rural environment and uh, encompassing the 
some of the major natural areas that we have, like Nose Hill Park. This is kind of how we organized the circle. So we had 34 sections with 126 people going after um, various parks, uh, neighborhoods, golf courses, industrial areas. We really had strong coverage throughout the circle this year, which I'm very happy uh, to see. Although we have some of these uh, really, really small sections, at the end of the day, that data is kind of amalgamated into what they formerly were. So these are more or less subsections that have been created over time. But I would like to be able to say consistently that, for example, all of these north sections, uh, they're still intact. And we just have to add that data together. So that'll take some time for me to compose, but I hope to be able to deliver some more kind of uh, long-term trends within these uh, sections over time. I wanna mention uh, the graph at the bottom of the page here for participants. So I have no way of knowing historically how many feeder watchers had ever participated. Audubon really only kind of takes into account the um, field surveyors. So I've consist or kept it consistent here. And we had 126, as I said, which is just a little bit lower than um, previous years. But I would say we are nearing kind of our, our average over the past 10 years with that. I also wanted to touch on the methods that were used this year because this was something that was a little bit different than how Phil had been doing it in the past. Uh, most of you know me through the promotion of various citizen science or community science apps within the Calgary area. So I really wanted to put a lot of emphasis on eBird this year. And luck had it that um, eBird had been kind of piloted in the 2021 May species count. And about a month before the Calgary count this year, eBird introduced uh, these trip reports. So this year we had, we asked all of the field teams to submit their data to us. And in total, there was 118 checklists that were shared on December 19th. The rest of the circle sections either used the template for their bird data but all of the sections eventually submitted a template that included their effort and mammal sightings and the uh, species details. Feeder watchers, this year we asked them to submit by phone and email to their feeder watcher captains. And we had 136 residences, which I can show you in a moment here, that uh, counted birds that day and sent them in. So very grateful to everyone that shared this. And if you'd like to kind of investigate this data a little bit closer on your own, you can go to eBird and look up the checklist 19177. So I'll put the link in the chat at the end if you want to explore that checklist. Also, I sent out a notification to anybody who submitted a checklist. So if you have any photos in the checklist that you submitted, by accepting that trip report, those will be included in the project. So my background is in geography and I wanted to kind of take a bit of a geographical approach to this. So what you're seeing on the right side is, are the circle sections. The darker the blue, the more feeder watchers are found within that section. So you can see primarily around kind of the reservoir area in the south and up in the Edgemont uh, Northwest there. So N18, which is right at the top, or sorry, N9 right at the top, dark blue, actually had 18 feeder watchers inside of there. Um, one other thing I was doing, I've had people ask, can we have too many feeder watchers? And the answer that I would say is no. So what I've kind of devised is a system for isolating feeder watcher residences that are within 150 meters of one another. And this year there was 23 residences that um, 
were more or less side by side. So it turned out to be 11 groups or what I refer to here as community birds. And it's really interesting when you look at the numbers because you can actually see that, for example, in this area, there's three houses. They counted the exact same birds, more or less. So what I do for that is kind of, um, I isolate the addresses and I look at the counts and then I just take the highest count and essentially make that just one residence. Uh, in some of these other sections throughout the circle, there are people that one house may have saw one thing and the other house saw another thing, but we only take the highest count for each species between the two of those. We accept the part participants and the, the survey hours that they did. Um, some of the other kind of analysis, I guess, are just the reductions or adjustments that um, I had learned from Phil. And I really hope to do a lot more kind of geographic analysis over the next year. So we're well prepared for next year in terms of understanding our circle and environment a bit better. So the final count for our birds this year in Calgary is 71,468. I haven't seen numbers from everywhere across Canada, but I feel like this could be one of the highest counts so far. Um, that's made up of 73 species that were found on count day, and we had four count week birds. So the count week birds were um, a buried thrush, a prairie falcon, a killdeer, and as of yesterday, we have added a greater white fronted uh, goose uh, to the count week birds. I should note that. Um, there were other reports of other species during count week that we have not accepted because we don't have any um, evidence to support the identification made by birders. But I will be sending out the list of all the numbers to people on Friday. So if you have any additional birds you wanna add in, this is the last chance you get. So the numbers you see on the screen have been adjusted. And we have some nice photos here from Arthur that I wanted to share. Uh, I'll talk a bit about a bit more about the species, but we also had some interesting finds, like a few hybrids and um, leucistic birds, including this crow that was found here. There was also this mystery bird that was identified by a feeder watcher. Well, let's say unidentified by a feeder watcher, and it required a bit of reconnaissance. So Bob went up the other day and took a fantastic photo of this new count circle record, which is a fox sparrow. So in 70 years, this is the first time we've had a fox sparrow in the Calgary count on count day, especially. And um, maybe Bob can clear it up in the chat, but I believe he said it was only the fourth time a fox sparrow had been counted in December. So that's the big reveal, guys. I hope you like it. <laughs> okay, so I've got this. It's a bit clustered, this graph, I suppose. But um, this is a, a graph showing the number of species for the entire duration of the Calgary count. The average number of species over the 70 years is. Um, 51. So I wouldn't really hold that at face value because pretty much up until 1969, we just didn't really have the participant numbers to really survey the number of uh, birds within the count circle. So it was likely much higher, but we're basing that off or this average off of some of those early numbers. You can see as um, with time, we've added more participants. You can't see those on this map, I get, but you can see that we've added more and more birds over the years. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One is the fact that we have a lot of open water within the city. We've also, uh, in terms of the built up urban environment, that helps birds that I refer to as urbanophiles, uh, birds that do very well in 
uh, urban environments such as black billed magpie, black capped chickadee, uh, northern flickers, rock pigeon, European starling, those types of things. So in the past 10 years, when we kind of look at that, the average number of species is about 67. And this year we had 70, 73 is what that should say. Um, the, I put the question mark at the top here nearing the threshold because each year we're only adding about you know, one new species per year. And they're very rare in between, like we may never see them again, such as the hummingbird last year, or perhaps even the fox sparrow this year. Those could be once in a count circle lifetime that are, they're happening. But you can see that our numbers for individual birds are still going up. We're right at the peak here, sitting at just over 70,000. And again, I say kind of the threshold because you can see that even with the participants going up and we're kind of leveling off around 150-ish that um, we're really not finding new species within our count circle. So the ones that we are finding are kind of vagrants. The party hours, I only have these going back to 1979 currently. Had some issues trying to graph it. Um, we're also missing some data in terms of party hours for earlier count dates, but I hope to collect those soon. So, um, yeah, what you're seeing here are primarily just the field teams, and feeder watchers are not included in this. But uh, the total field um, party hours in the field this year, excuse me, was 273. And with all of the feeder watchers, 345 hours watch. Some record high counts we had this year. One of my favorite birds is the Townsend Solitaire with a record high at 18. We're also sitting at a new record for bald eagles. So the raw number before adjustments was actually 72, which is quite high. and after applying Phil's um, adjustments, plus also referring back to anybody's notes on um, the life stage of the bald eagle, the time it was sighted and flight path, I've adjusted that back uh, to 55. So we're also, uh, I'll show you the graph for the house finch in a little bit here as well as the Northern Flicker, but these are all record high counts. And you can see that a lot of these are urbanophiles, files, as I said. I like to mention a couple of these unusual species. So these are birds that um, have occurred less than two times, two times or less in the past 10 years. Uh, we had a snowy owl this year, not officially, doc not officially documented by the team that was surveying this area, but it was supported by photographs and um, the location was confirmed. We had a white crown sparrow, very beautiful white crown sparrow in the Weaselhead Park. I was very pleased to hear about the sharp-tailed grouse. We had three of those. Uh, we haven't had any, we've had three the last time in 2016. And the last time before that was 1997. We also had both tundra swans and trumpeter swans, one tundra swan, a uh, ruddy duck, which is a bit unusual, and we're happy to have it, and a Wilson snake. So Chris Dirtnell took this great photo of the sharp-tailed grouse, and you can check it out here. So kind of going back to that map that I showed you right at the beginning, you know, Nose Hill is where we had traditionally found sharp-tailed grouse within the city. And as kind of that urban development encompassed the park, lots of disturbance in terms of um, just presence of people and their pets, uh, we haven't seen any sharp-tailed grouse there in some time. 
probably about eight weeks ago, I put out a call on Twitter asking if anybody wanted to make a guess at the number of wax wings. Most people expected them to be in about the seven to 9,000 range, but I'm happy to say that they were way up this year. This is an adjusted number. The total count was actually closer to 19,000, but um, we have reports of potential duplications of flocks being counted. So that's why it's sitting at 15,676. And when we look back, that looks pretty consistent, except for some of these high years in the early 2000s. The bald eagles, uh, you know, we've been talking more and more about them each year in Calgary, about how they seem to be more present. Jim had mentioned that mallards are their favorite food. And I wonder if our Calgary count data actually would support that. When we look at mallards, the long-term trend, uh, we did have a bit of a high year for mallards, but the actual population of mallards over time really has not changed at all. So I'm wondering if there's, you know, maybe it's not the number of mallards, but perhaps the locations of which they're congregating that's uh, perhaps influencing bald eagle populations. We also saw that Canada geese are still going up quite a bit. And I feel like this is more parallel to where the bald eagles are at. So I would suggest maybe that bald eagles favorite meal is actually Canada goose and not the mallard. But another really good year for mallards, just under 19,000. Another common backyard bird, uh, house finch, just through the roof this year at 2000. So, we're looking at you know an increase of about 800. I know when I've been out birding a few times this year, I've seen some you know flocks of around 30 of these things at one time. So maybe it has something to do with the quality bird seed we're picking up from our local shops. But um, yeah, this is really incredible to see how well they're doing in Calgary. So yeah, 2015 this year for that. Some of these other kind of urbanophiles that I wanted to show you, these uh, bird numbers are growing as our city grows. Um, and they're all doing quite well. So black-billed magpie is still another pretty strong year up near 2,500. Uh, Black-capped chickadee is continuing to climb. This um, is close to a record year, if not. The house sparrows, you know, there's been a couple spikes, but we're still kind of climbing over time. And another one of my favorite birds is Northern Flicker. And we see here that the numbers are just exponentially growing over the past uh, 20 years or so. And these birds I have included all the way back to count number one, because we do have um, sufficient data for those. So here's our list of all the the birds that we saw this year. I made a couple notes and I'll try and point them out on here, but um, obviously you can see that these big numbers just jump out. So when we're looking at, you know, Canada geese, mallards, um, rock pigeons, bohemian waxwings, and house finches, those types of things, it's not hard for us to achieve, you know, 70,000 birds in a single day count. There were a couple strange things that I noticed this year. One, uh, our golden eyes were about half of last year, which is kind of unexpected. We did have um, yeah, these swans, as I mentioned, still a couple wood ducks hanging around, which is interesting. Uh, what you don't see on this list are the birds that we didn't have this year. And I think there's a few people that might be happy about what we didn't see because these birds are often disputed. Uh, I wish that we would have seen them, but uh, these birds are purple finch. So we had zero purple finch. And I know it's been a topical debate the past few years. We had no Cooper's hawks, but we did have four sharp shinned hawks, and we actually had six northern goshawks, which is fairly impressive. 
I'll just draw your attention over to white wing crossbill. We had no red crossbills this year, which is a bit unfortunate, but it looks like it's fairly consistent across most of the counts with, um, within Alberta this year that red crossbills were way down and not huge numbers of white wing crossbills, which you'll see here at 41. The sharp tail grouse is nice, but I do miss the fact that we had missed our roughed grouse. So it's a bit unfortunate. We know a couple places in the city where they're usually or commonly found, but just didn't work out for, this, for us this year. One of the waterfowl that is fairly common, not always consistent, but is northern pintail that we didn't get this year. So if we had had all of those birds, it would have been a record year count for our species list. Um, a couple other interesting things. We do hold a record for merlins, but we're nowhere near that this year. We're about half of the merlins that we have for records. Uh, so. I didn't see any other mammal sightings for the other counts, but I did want to pull this up. Uh, I'm still working on trying to build up the historical database for mammal sightings. Obviously, we ask you guys when you're out there to count these things, and we want to understand these populations a bit more. Eastern gray squirrels, we all know them well. They're still dominating within the urban environment. Not sure how I feel about these domestic rabbits. You know, 70 still alive in December is a bit unfortunate. They do eat a lot of um, native plants. And we still see that our red squirrels are few and far between. We have less than 70 squirrels, according to this census this year. So next time you see one, appreciate that moment because there's way fewer than you think in the city. And they're only found in a few areas. A couple other good records uh, that I'm pleased with in terms of mammals, snowshoe hare. You know, it's not all that common within the city, but with enough watchful eyes, it looks like we can find a few. Uh, coyotes are pretty strong at 25. Bobcat, they're a little bit more elusive, only at two. Um, we didn't get any beavers this year, but we did settle for the next best thing, a muskrat. And happy to say we got one moose. So the next count is gonna be almost a year from now, December 18th, so please mark your calendars. I'm happy to stick around for a couple of questions in terms of Calgary numbers. I can pull up some other data if you'd like. And I'd just like to say thank you to everyone again, and thank you very much. So I'll just open the chat here and see if there's any questions here. Okay, so it's the fourth fox sparrow ever reported on eBird in Alberta in the winter months of December through February. So very strong month bird for Alberta, as well as the Christmas bird count in Calgary. We've got somebody asking about great blue heron and that special heron in the Inglewood Bird Sanctuary. There was no herons this year, which is what we would normally expect. The, uh, the special heron was the yellow crown night heron. But I don't know if that's been seen in some time now. So we've got uh, Jim disputing that he said that mallards are a favorite food of eagles, but we'll let it slide. Nobody really knows. <laughs> Who won the Battle of Alberta? Well, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to reach out to the Toronto Nature Club to find out how the Toronto Circle did. 
And I'm happy to say that we have about three times more birds in Calgary than was counted on the Toronto bird count. In terms of Edmonton, one unique thing for them, they only had two Canada goose this year. I think their species were a little bit lower, but the individuals were kind of around the 20 to 25,000 mark, if I'm not mistaken. But very impressive in terms of the numbers for uh, Calgary's count. And as I said, I feel that it could be, you know, perhaps a record for uh, number of individuals across Canada. But we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so here's an interesting question. I did talk about the methods a little bit, and we have a question here asking if the compilation effort was reduced by having many counters use eBird. So the short answer is yes and no. It was great to be able to have almost a live feed of the bird numbers coming in, but one a couple of issues that I ran into was that I stopped getting notifications on eBird and had to resort to only my email notifications from eBird, which meant that I had to go through probably 150 emails to ensure that I accepted every single eBird checklist. The other issue is that although we tried our best to inform people on how to submit their checklists. Often, maybe half of the checklists were submitted with um, information that required follow-up. So I think we're on the right trajectory, but as a pilot, uh, we can definitely use a little bit more improvement to become more efficient over time. I also would like to mention that I am totally fine with leaving some of the historical, um, you know, the more traditional ways of accepting counts. So whether that be by phone or by email, I want it to be as accessible to everyone as possible. And I feel like with more analysis, these kinds of uh, little tricks, that we can encourage more people within our communities to become involved. As I've mentioned over the past, well, long time, like these types of citizen science events are vital to understanding our environment. But at the end of the day, they're very much about engaging with our communities and our neighbors. So I would hope that um, we could get more people involved with our count over time. I'll just find the eBird uh, checklist and put that in the chat for anyone who would like it here. Okay, so the trip report is in the chat there and I've made it available to the public. I will post the final results in the chat here, but um, anybody who submitted a checklist, you're welcome to accept the request to participate in this. And at that time, you can add comments and those types of things. You can also review the photos that people took. There's some really good ones of Harlequin ducks, the uh, white crowned sparrow, golden crowned kinglets, those types of things. Yeah, Bob has mentioned one other thing. So the compilation was also challenging because traditionally we would meet up and have a bit of a party and collect the numbers all live. Uh, due to COVID, we opted not to do that this year. So we, we hope that in the future we can do some type of bird count party. Okay, so with that, I will stop the recording and I'll just say thank you to everyone else who's still on. I'm happy to answer some questions and 
to dive into the data a little bit further if you like. We'll stick around for another 10 minutes or so.